Welcome back everybody. Today I'm here at the cabin and uh, it's a sad day. We're pulling the maple tops today. Um, the trees are starting to get buddy and the frogs are just starting to think about calling. I've heard some very slightly uh, on the nice warm days. So that's time. We've got to pull those taps and i got a few chores to do around the cabin. So come on along. Well, first problem of the day. Came in here and take a look. This picture had fallen off. I think the uh, hanger that I had it on glue kind of gave up the ghost so this is too bad this is a picture uh, Charlie no ghost wolf had sent me of the eagle so I'm gonna have to get a new frame for it I gotta clean this up walking over here I just want to show you guys really quickly this is where um, we have some snakes um, there is a hibernaculum in there and last time I was here, uh, there's actually a dead snake, um, a large one actually coiled up here. I think uh, the fox may have bitten it. It had a bite in its head and its tail. So usually in the warm days, they will come out of this little hole and they tend to go right over there where Royce is walking around and uh, they sun themselves. So we'll see if anybody comes out of the hibernaculum today. Maybe not. It's a little bit cool. All right. Easy does it. That's how it goes. And what you do is you just leave that little opening there and you might see some sap still kind of running out of there but this will seal up on its own uh, don't stick anything in there you could injure the tree just transferring things here and you can see this is the season where you get the bugs so time to pull these taps yeah sap's looking good but i'm definitely not getting as much production uh, this year as i did in past years well it's bittersweet the last boil of the year but means we're on to bigger and better things, more foraging, exploring, camping again in the spring without the bugs, which is awesome. So yeah, I've got uh, one pail and then I've got another like, I don't know, half pail. So it will be boiling all day. Got to be careful this time of year. The grass is really dry. You can see some of the new growth coming there actually, but super dry. So can't leave the fire unattended for too, too long. Um, Got to be nearby just in case this grass catches. Certainly is a beautiful day out today. Had a little bit of snow this morning, but now the skies have opened up and boy, that sun is really warm. That time of day, I'm going to get a bit of lunch started here. So I'm just boiling some of my own water. This takes quite a while to get up to a boil, so uh, patience. Boy, I don't think I should have filled it that high, but uh, anyway, I guess I want to get this finished up. I'm just going to make some soup for lunch. Trying a new GPS tracker here with Royce. It's the um, Tech 1.5 from Sport Dog. So it says he's about 34 meters up ahead. And there he is. So we're just giving this a whirl. Stay tuned for my full review on this. Um, a little bit bright, so you can hardly see the screen, but uh, yeah. So we'll see how uh, this goes. I uh, just definitely need a new option here at the cabin. I had never did find that Finster. I really like the Finster GPS tracker. It was great. It was economical. It uh, it did its job. Uh, disconnected here and there, but same with these GPS trackers as well. So um, we're just going to have to see how this goes. But uh, it's a bit higher price point, obviously. But uh, we'll just see if this works out. All right, that looks good. This is my soup, my ramen noodle. Royce had a meal of poop. Get away from me. <laughs> he was rolling around in the poop over there. Yuck. Probably turkey. Not gonna have some lunch. Got a few jobs to do here around camp today. Put more batteries in my browning, never ending task. And uh, also, the wind just came up there. And also, I made a trip to Princess Auto on the way up and I've uh, picked up a few items. I'll show you those in a minute. Up ahead, as I'm kind of walking on just a little tour around the uh, pine forest there, I see uh, the Phoebe is back sort of flitting around uh, in the pines here. Phoebes always nest in front of the cabin, so it's exciting. It's the first sighting. How do you know they're Phoebes? Uh, as they do that little call like Phoebe, Phoebe, and they flick their tail a little bit. It's very characteristic of uh, their behavior. So pretty neat. All the uh, spring migrants are coming back through that kestrel. Um, they nest. They've nested here for, I don't know, nine years. Same probably family over and over again. Um, basically, I've been using the Merlin app to help me identify um, some birds, uh, especially by call, if I'm not sure what they are. And last time I was here, really exciting, I heard some uh, evening grow speaks. So I had not heard those here at the cabin, so I was really, really happy to know they're in the area. Also, the song sparrows are back, and also the uh, woodcocks, which is really cool. And the grouse is drumming. Um, I was here like a week or so ago. And uh, yeah, that was awesome to hear the grouse back. Um, grouse has always been using the same log for years and years and years. 
So uh, it's nice that they're back nesting in the area. Last time I was here, I found some more poplars. So I've been checking those out. Kind of back in this area right here, some young ones. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff to make um, some more salve. So that's great. That stuff works really, really well. Glad you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know if you want to see more videos um, on wild medicinals. So I can barely hear Royce now, but it looks like he's just behind me and to the left. Cabin's the X. I'm there. It says he's traveling in the direction of the cabin, about 60 meters away, going 4.8 kilometers an hour. I think this is going to work out well here. Yeah, it's getting foamy this time of year, so let's do that and flick it off. It gets a little bit of a little dirt and detritus out as well. You want to kind of keep this area clear of foam so you get a good boil. This is going nicely. I'm just add a little bit more fuel to the fire here. And just do a couple of chores here around the cabin. So I mentioned I went to Princess Auto on the way and I picked up uh, these two 60 LED solar security lights. I want to put one in front of the cabin and one by the shed. Uh, the old one I have is just, they're just too weak. They, uh, they're, <laughs> I don't know seven years old or something like that. Got some more batteries and I got some more silicone because I messed up uh, by the um, water barrel there. Another thing to do is uh, I've got uh, a hinge here to put on the the fuel uh, shed. And then what are these? Well, these are uh, from last fall, I harvested um, the ramps, so ramp seeds while leak. So I want to uh, get these in the ground here. They've uh, been through one cold cycle in the fridge all uh, fall and winter. Uh, they'll have to go through one more cold cycle and then they will start to germinate next spring. Very exciting. I'm just going to put some of uh, those ramp seeds back in and around here. I think it'll be awesome. Definitely love the uh, hardwood deciduous forest. I'm just going to kind of pick a few spots here and try to set up a colony. So here they are in pristine condition. I've kept them damp in a little baggie all winter in the fridge. So nice and firm, not dried out. Uh, quite a few there. This little tiny all here. I'm just going to put little tiny holes in the ground and put in my seeds. The soil is still pretty cool. That's okay. You can see how close to the cabin they'll be right here on this little hill. I'm covered over with leaves now. We're all done. Seeds for the future have been planted. Well, I can't wait. So this year, nothing's going to happen. Be next spring, we might see some sprouts. This is exciting. You know, my camera's set up for the spring. Let's see if we get any moose coming through here again. They're all fired up and ready to roll. There I am. Hi. <laughs> of course, Royce has found the last remaining patch of snow. He loves snow. He loves being uh, kept cold at all times. So <laughs> he likes eating snow, rolling in it. Not too much longer. It looks like it's almost all gone. So there's where I set up the other camera. So uh, hopefully this will look right down that path if any moose come up here. Usually it's this month or, yeah, basically another week or so. Well, we definitely have some deer here. Oh. Hard when it's dark at night. Oh, very good. No moose yet. Take a look, I've got a wolf or a coyote there. That's really cool. Excited about that. And as going through here, I am finding more of that one. There's a fox. And there's a daylight fox picture. You can see how much snow there was there not too long ago. There's a raccoon and me. So that's great. This is a really active spot. I'm glad I moved that camera. I've got the other one set up too. Very cool. In other good news, the butternut has survived. There's a butternut tree in here. They're endangered. So you can see it right there. I've got the caging on it so that the rabbits and the deer don't get at it. In a few very short weeks, I'm going to be picking up uh, some more shrubs and trees to plant here at the cabin. Every year I do that. So I think I've got probably 90 or 100 trees coming to put in. So uh, they're like the bare root stock, obviously. I'm not digging giant holes. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so this will be uh, many, many years that I've been doing this. So it's pretty exciting. Lots of work, but uh, it's a great project for the beginning of May. So just in front of the shed right now, I'm going to put up the first uh, security light. I've had quite a few of these lights over the years, the, uh, the LED lights, and they work really well. So I've got one inside the sheds. So when you open the door, the shed um, you know, illuminates nicely. You can see what you're doing. I do want something at, uh, if it gets dusky uh, to kind of flash on. I have one at the uh, similar type product down by the, uh, the shower house there, and I think that's great. 
but uh, I need a little bit more light over here and at the cabin. Right, you can see I installed it right there, literally under five minutes. Um, so I'm going to put the solar panel just kind of where the other one is, like kind of up there. Um, just, uh, it's just the best way to do it. It's where the sun kind of comes uh, with the easterly exposure there. Well, I had myself time. That was literally 10 minutes of work. So... Easy peasy, all nice and done. And as you can see, this will be solar charged and uh, just right exactly where I want it uh, to turn on. You can adjust the sensitivity on these things um, and how long they stay on. So a great little buy, a really reasonable price for two. There, I just turned it on so you guys can see the brightness. We'll be, uh, I'll probably show you guys in another video when it's dark outside what it looks like, but pretty bright. All right, so I popped that one up there too. There's the other security light. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Again, less than 10 minutes of work. In preparation for collecting cleaner water this year in the water barrels, I'm going to use this gutter guard. I got this a long time ago. I never did use it, but it'll help keep the leaves and sticks and other things out of there so it doesn't uh, muck up the, uh, the clean water in the water barrel. Much better. Well, it's not going to prevent from any of these little bits of the shingle kind of going off into the uh, gutter, but at least it prevents the sticks and the leaves, things that uh, make it really slimy and mucky in the barrels. There's one of the two barrels there, and uh, I made a mistake this spring of actually walking past here and kicking this off. So I brought the silicone in case I needed it, but it's not too bad, maybe minimal leakage there. So I'll just put a little bit around here, but uh, the barrel right now is a third full, so that's great. And the birch has just started running. So there's some birch water. Mmm, uh, good stuff. Uh, not too much yet, but uh, it's a start. Mmm, tastes good. Well, I've poured in uh, what I have left, and this will go home to be uh, boiled off there a little bit more controlled fashion. Take a look at the color there. Uh, it's quite dark, uh, and that's typical for the end of season. The sap gets a very dark color. It's so bittersweet to finish this up, but I know there's lots more fun things coming uh, late this spring and in the summer. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out with me at the cabin while we're doing some chores and boiling down the last of the sap. Hope you guys have a great week as always. Take care. Bye for now.